Good morning everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Dengeki interview with Hiro Arai. So he is the official navigator for NGS Headline. Keep in mind, official navigator does not equal producer. I'm going to make a whole other video just clearing things up, but he does not make decisions. He is just public relations, alright? But either way, Dengeki did an interview with Hiro and then they translated everything into English and posted it on the official NGS website. So we're going to be reading the officially English translated one so we don't have to depend on Google Translate. But before we jump into that, there's a couple of important announcements I need to make. First of all is I just got my second COVID shot. So if you don't see me for a couple of days or if you don't see any videos, don't be alarmed. It's probably because I'm sick and I'm in bed and you know, symptoms, right? However, I will try my very best to still continue to have daily uploads for you guys but I can't make any promises because I don't know how bad the symptoms are going to be. If I have a high fever, I'm just going to rest, I'm going to hydrate, I'm just going to lay in bed and be a potato. However, if I don't have a high fever and I'm still able to function properly like a human being, well then you probably won't see any difference. You probably just see daily uploads as usual, but maybe a little bit more low energy. But uh, meh, who knows? Who knows? I don't know yet because the symptoms haven't hit me yet. However, when they do, I hope they aren't too bad. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is if you're new to the channel, I'm trying to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you guys could do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. All right, over here you can see the Dengeki article. It's all in Japanese, blah, blah, blah. We don't understand anything. So we're just gonna jump straight into the NGS website over here. If you wanna read it for yourself, it will be in the description below. So you can just click on the link and read it for yourself. So I've already read through this entire article, but we're just gonna go through the main points. So who is Hiro Arai? As I said earlier, he is basically the PR person for New Genesis. Now he is mainly in charge of the Japanese side of things. However, since the NGS headline is catered towards the Japanese players and the global players, he does the announcements for the global side as well. However, he is not responsible for the global side, nor is he responsible for any of the decisions made on the game. So the next thing they talk about is the PSO2 station as well as the PSO2 New Genesis prologue. So these were the old live streams. Basically, the PSO2 station was basically like the arcs hour of what we had back in base PSO2. However, it it was a lot more higher production because they had a bigger budget so forth and so on and they invited the producers to actually come onto the show and explain their decisions and why the game was made a specific way however after the episode 5 incident the producers as well as the directors refused to come on the show and for good reason so for those who are new to pso2 and have never played the base game what happened during episode 5's release was it was an absolute disaster because one specific class the hero class was extremely powerful to the point that no other class could compete with it and so everyone only played the hero and if you played any other classes you were basically throwing and this power scaling plus the content plus the direction the game was going was not in the best interest of the player base so a lot of players just said screw pso2 and stop playing it altogether and during this period we considered as the dark ages of base PSO2 and it just so happens that the director of episode 5 is the same director of New Genesis right now. So this is why a lot of veteran PSO2 players are very very unhappy with New Genesis right now and associate a lot of the shortcomings of New Genesis with the current director because the current director nearly killed off the base game which was actually a freaking masterpiece and somehow he nearly killed it and having him direct New Genesis really left a bad taste in everyone's mouth because of how poorly executed it was with the lack of content with just lack of everything right it was very very lackluster and New Genesis just doesn't live up to the PSO2 standard which is why a lot of people are very very upset. However, back to the article at hand over here. So PSO2 Station was basically the Japanese version of Arcs Hour, and then we had the New Genesis Prologue. The New Genesis Prologue was basically like a trailer to build up hype for New Genesis, and during the prologue, each episode was about like an hour to an hour and a half, and they had a bunch of guest speakers such as idols, as well as comedians, so forth and so on, and they had a bunch of skits as well as filler content. But it just so happened that most viewers didn't really enjoy that, and 
and they just wanted the core information about the game. And this is what led to the evolution of NGS Headline, which is like a 15 to 20 minute live stream of just the core information of what exactly is coming in this big update, and it's very no nonsense, straight to the point. Now another reason why they want to keep the NGS headline relatively short is because they do have to do translations, they do need to do some editing, and it's just easier if the live stream is shorter because that way they have more time to spend on editing and making the transitions feel a lot more smoother. However, they do have plans for a longer live stream if necessary due to major game updates. So expect the November live stream to be a little bit longer, mainly because in December we have a major game update because that's what it says on the roadmap. So we are probably going to have a lot more content to cover during the NGS headline. So over here, they just emphasize that Hero is not in charge of the global side of New Genesis. However, all of the information and announcements are shared between the teams. So he simply gives us the news and the information for both Global and JP. Hero also mentioned in the interview that the global players are a lot more vocal than the Japanese players with their concerns about game bugs and available content at launch. However, at the time of this recording, uh, this has kind of changed. I think it's like 50-50 now as the JP players are very very frustrated with the game as well. The next question they ask is are there more PC or console players? I don't really see the importance of this. I mean, you know, as long as there's players, I'm happy. But either way, there are more people playing on PC on the global version while on the Japanese version it's split 50-50. I think it's because the Japanese version has more choices of consoles, you know, if they got the PlayStation and the Switch, while on the global version we only have the Xbox as an alternative. So the next point over here talks about making PSO2 NGS and gives us a little bit more insight on the development team and they had two main goals. The first was maintaining the ability for players to use cosmetic items they had purchased in PSO2 while exploring New Genesis. And the second goal was that they wanted to create a place where everyone could gather, leading to a decision to make the game open field. So they wanted to make an open world game and they wanted to make it so that you can carry all your cosmetics over. And they have achieved these two goals. Unfortunately, the problem right now is there's simply not a lot of things to do. Yes, we can gather together in an open field, but there's nothing to do in this open field, unfortunately. And it's great that we can bring over all of our cosmetic items, however, what do we do other than look fabulous at the moment? So unfortunately, NGS is lacking in the content department, and hopefully they will be fixing that in December. So speaking about the pros and cons of NGS, they do address it in the interview over here. The team has received positive feedback on the graphics of a beautiful open world and the exhilarating feel of combat. Players have also commended the multi-weapons, which means they enjoy the combat actions more freely. However, they've also received negative feedback or things that need improvement. And the three things that they listed over here is the amount of content, the number of bugs, and lag. And the team sincerely apologizes for the lag and bugs, and moving forward, they are working on preventing and correcting the issues. So it's funny here that they only apologize for the lag and bugs, and not for the amount of content, which leaves me a little bit hopeful that, hey, maybe they have this in the bag already, and they know that there's lack of content, but they also know that the December update is gonna fix all of these issues because they have a huge update with a ton of content. This is me with my wishful thinking and my copium at the side, but I really do hope that the December update is going to be as big as like Inazuma in uh, Genshin Impact. You know, it was just boom, here you go, a couple hundred hours of content, go knock yourself out, have some fun. I'm really hoping that the December update is going to be like that. Now over here they talk about the content update differences between PSO2 and NGS. So for those who never played the base game of PSO2, basically the cycle of PSO2 was every two weeks we got something new. So we were never bored because we constantly got new content, new events, new things to do every two weeks. It was like clockwork. However, the reason why they could uphold this was simply because we had eight years of content crammed into one year. So we constantly got new stuff to do. We had new urgent quests, we had new gear. We had a lot of things to work towards every two weeks and it was really, really fast. However, with New Genesis, they don't have eight years of content in their backlog, which they can just shove into our faces every two weeks. So they're drip feeding us content with expansion of quests and systems that will come every two to three months, and every six months we get a big content draw. So this is the current system what the NGS team has decided to do. So this is why 
for the past three to four months that we've played the game at the moment, it's kind of like, well, it's kind of boring. We don't have much to do, you know, but from what we can see, they are upholding the new quests and systems every two to three months. We did get the new mining base urgent quest. We got the new braver class and we're getting the bouncer class next month. So they are upholding what they promised over here. However, I do understand that people are frustrated because I'm frustrated as well that there's not enough, you know, there doesn't seem to be enough stuff for us to do in the game. And this is why a lot of people are playing other games at the meantime or going back to the base game. They also addressed the controversy over here about the SG scratch tickets. And this is something I'm extremely unsatisfied about. And the NGS team even states it right here. The team acknowledges that they should have made an announcement prior to the game launch that NGS SG scratch tickets would function differently compared to those available in PSO2. So as a player of base PSO2, for one year I've been conditioned that the SG scratch works exactly like the AC scratcher works exactly the same way. And for some reason they decided to change the system in NGS even though they kept it the same on base PSO2. And so it was really really off-putting and a lot of people lost some money as well as a lot of star gems because they thought that hey, these cosmetic items are going away, this is my last chance to get them, so I need to get them now. And when they were still there, when the new SG Scratch came in, people were like, wait, what the hell's going on? And it really, really sucks. But the thing that I'm unhappy about is when the new items come in, you don't have a guaranteed chance to always get new items. You're gonna get some old items from the previous scratch, which maybe I don't want anymore. Maybe I only want the new items and there's no way to roll for the new items only. And the percentages is really, really low of getting the items that you actually want because there's so many items jammed into this banner. And this is why I'm very, very unhappy about this. And I really do hope that they do change this or add a second banner for people who actually want to spend their star gems, so forth and so on. And that concludes the interview with Hero Arai. I did skip several points, which I didn't find very interesting. However, if you want to read the entire article for yourself, again, the link is in the description below. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye!